Hi, we've just been talking about um, how commercial organisations are using scenario planning to help them business plan and how we think that may apply to the public sector. Um, so could you explain what you're doing and where, where you work and who you are? Uh, I am Ben Proctor. I work for Herefordshire Council and I am in charge of cool stuff there. Cool stuff. That sounds brilliant. Um, can I have your job when you're finished with it, Ben? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, you, you were saying to me about um, how commercial companies have scenario planned to two impacts of the social web, really, and, and, and the network society. Uh, yeah, so we were, we were talking about um, a sort of a medium-term economic planning and in, for my accounting. And, um, and as a result of that, I was going off and looking at existing scenario planning that other people had done. Um, and one of the ones that I went to is Shell, because Shell have been doing a lot of scenario planning ever since the 70s, and it's very accessible very and really interesting stuff. And their current um, uh, sort of um, plan is that they see there are, the world could go in two ways, and they're calling it mountains and oceans. Mountains is um, essentially an increasingly um, transactional relationship between citizens and the state. Um, and you were saying where money is more hypothecated towards yeah. a specific... Um, I may have been, in my head, overlapping with some scenario planning that the DfE did as well. So yeah. I, uh, um, but, um, but, yeah, so, so um, you increasingly... Um, a world where citizens see a very direct relationship with the tax they pay and the services they get, and, the, and, and so tax becomes increasingly hypothecated um, and linked to very specific services, which is potentially quite, you know, quite an, uh, um, an unequal way of distributing. That's not, it's, it's, it's the opposite of the common goods. Um, and they would say, in that sense, if, if that's the way the world goes, you were saying, interestingly, they were saying in, invest in gas. Yeah, so that's the, the ultimately, that's what Shell are interested in. So uh, in this... Um, uh, it, it leads to increasing sort of not exactly authoritarian but very authority the state protects you and, 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 mod and mediates society but doesn't do much else in that world gas is where you want to put your money um, and, uh, and the other direction that they, they were saying society could go is much more distributed um, much more network society type stuff um, where nation states might um, lose their kind of unique power um, they, this um, uh, and, and power becomes much more distributed amongst uh, elites and technocrats and, and the citizenry as a whole. And in that world, they were saying you probably want to invest in solar. So, um. so it could. So we're at a kind of pivotal place, really, where we, it, where really they're thinking it could, it could, we could, as 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 a civilization, go down one route or another. At this point, we're at a bit of a junction. Um, I wouldn't characterise it quite like that. So that so their scenarios tend to they tend to have one two or they tend to have two or three paths at any given point. So it's not. I wouldn't say that they're saying we are suddenly at a decision point. Yeah. I think if you I, I I remember maybe 15 years ago the the scenario plans that came out there from Shell were they they similarly had two that they could see two directions in which global society might go, which were in, had some parallels with this. So I, I, and their, their scenario planning is 50-year planning, so it's, okay. they, are, they are trying to, to really sort of look ahead. So I wouldn't... So it's slightly more subtle than yeah, this direction or that direction, I would, yeah, and a lot I more would, long term. I would say so. Thank you.